What's up guys, this is Matt from New England Creative. I wanted to put together a, uh, a wedding film trailer sort of walkthrough or you know, kind of thought process um, type video, right? How do we think about uh, putting together uh, a really great, catchy, uh, you know, engaging wedding teaser? And I, I put out this wedding uh, teaser uh, a couple days ago and, and shared it around to some of the wedding videography community and got a lot of really great feedback on it. So uh, I figured what better opportunity to, uh, to sort of uh, take a leap and jump into this, uh, these sorts of YouTube videos than to, to kind of walk you guys through uh, one of our latest teaser films and kind of guide you through um, kind of how we put things together and how we got the shots that we did. So before we get into it, why don't I start off with just sort of my general philosophy on wedding film teasers. So I've been shooting wedding films for uh, almost four years now. Um, started in 2016 and for the first two years we kind of just offered your you know uh, standard highlight film type offerings about a year in we started doing documentary edits and then about two years in uh, about two years ago um, started offering wedding teaser films but what I found was that the engagement from a social media perspective was so huge on these teaser films and that if you can get something out quickly you know, a few days, a week maybe after the wedding, get it out to the bride and she can share it around to people uh, in sort of a quicker fashion that can only reap lots of benefits in terms of, you know, your social media following, brand engagement, brand awareness, things like that. Everybody that attended the wedding sees the teaser and thinks, oh my God, this is amazing. I'm gonna follow them and stick around for the next film that they have coming out or for you know for the bride's you know full length highlight film, right? So you get a lot of early engagement, early eyes on your work as a result of doing these. Not only that, I've gotten direct feedback from inquiries uh, you know, who, who filled out our form on our website that have said, I saw so-and-so's teaser film, I was blown away. And just from that 60 second Instagram teaser, I knew that you were the company we needed to hire to do our wedding film. So it's things like that that start, you know, getting you thinking about adding them into your package offerings and, you know, maybe you're raising your prices and, and including them into your standard based packages like we did. Um, but for us, and I know a lot of other filmmakers out there, wedding teaser films have been game changers. With that said, why don't we quickly watch, uh, you know, the, the, the minute and I think 17 second uh, teaser film that we just put out a couple days ago um, from start to finish and then um, afterwards I'll, I'll kind of break out and premiere kind of what our thought process was and, and go from there. So let's do it. Let's check it out. Dear Riley, dear Chris, how do I explain to you what it's like to be in a great marriage? And you know how they say a picture is worth a thousand words? So I thought, well, how do I draw a picture that explains what is a great marriage? I just, like, how do I do that? And draw it big. Like, you know, a massive canvas painting in the sky, but I don't paint really well. So the best I can do is I hope in 30 years after what you're about to see, you look back and say, yeah, it's been like that. All right, so that was um, Riley and Chris, uh, a couple we shot this past Friday. Um, let me preface this by saying that moment with the fireworks and everything was, in the four years I've been doing this, one of the most incredible things that I've seen shooting weddings. So realize that not all of your weddings are gonna have $30,000 fireworks shows in them, right? Don't let that discourage you you know, these, these sort of epic moments that I may never even see again in my career, don't let those things 
discourage you from taking a leap and, and, and trying to put together a teaser film that's awesome, engaging, and mind-blowing, right? So why don't we jump into Premiere and, and um, we'll kind of stop and go and I'll kind of walk you guys through it along the way. All right, let's go ahead and hit play here and uh, get it moving. Dear Riley, dear Chris, how do I explain to you what it's... Okay, let me stop it there. So that first shot, shot on the brand new A7S III with a Zeiss uh, 25 millimeter F2 lens. That shot, as it was playing out and I was looking at the screen on my gimbal as it hanging on in the back seat of this classic convertible going 30 miles an hour down the road, I saw that shot and I thought to myself, this is amazing, right? Um, and you'll have moments like that, I think, as you get more experience where you'll see shots playing out on your screen and say, okay, this is this is what I call a hero shot, right? This is gonna be epic. This is something that I wanna highlight in a, a teaser film or, or perhaps at a, a really beautiful moment in your creative edit, your highlight film or whatever, right? Um, that shot almost didn't happen, right? Uh, um, you know, the, the bride had initially just wanted to park the convertible in such a way where they could pose in front of it. Um, and so, uh, you know, there's one thing uh, that I learned at a workshop a couple of years ago that I've had in the back of my head for the last couple of years, and it's be ruthless, right? If you walk away from this video with nothing else, keep that in the back of your mind, be ruthless, okay? And what that means is weddings are a one-shot opportunity, right? If you have an idea in your head and you think to yourself, wow, that could be amazing or like this could be a game changing shot or like a portfolio worthy kind of idea, act on it. The worst they could do is say no, right? So I was sort of com battling with myself back and forth in my head saying, you know, do I tell them to get in the car and let's go for a drive or do I not? Like, what do I do, right? Um, and you know what I said? screw it, right? And I said, hey guys, let, let's get in the car and go for a drive, right? Let's let's do this thing. And so they were on, right? It was, they were stoked about it. And then literally like 10 minutes into the drive, the bride turned around and was like, I'm so glad we did this. This is like the best thing ever, right? And what did it yield me? A freaking killer shot, right? So, oh, I'll, I'll say one other thing too. That moment where she kind of leans her head back, right? Let's, let's, let's watch it again really quick. Dear Riley, dear Chris, how do I explain? Where she's just kind of leaned back on her husband's shoulder and like it's just this blissful moment. They're cruising at sunset, this beautiful car, beautiful location, right? I actually told her, I said, you know, she was just kind of like looking out the front of the, the windshield and I was sitting there looking. I said, hey, Riley, would you mind just kind of like resting your head back, closing your eyes, just, just soak it in, right? And so she did that and it sort of just played out in this beautiful moment, right? It was just a little, a little tip, a little like coaching sometimes that's required to sort of pull these shots out of your couples from time to time. So keep that in mind. Explain to you what it's like to be in a great marriage. Okay, that shot. So in my head, you know, I have like a list of, of like, again, what I call hero shots that I want to get for every wedding and it's like on my list is usually like okay an epic shot of the bride right um and so in that case i had uh my a7s3 on my ronin sc uh with uh i believe it was uh my zeiss distagon 35 1.4 lens um and so you know in terms of approaching the bride for that shot i said you know get in front of the window. And usually my whole mantra is getting them into a beautiful location and just almost having them act more organically, right? Trying to limit the posing and like kind of corny movements. And obviously some brides are better at it than others. But, um, you know, I said, look, when I tell you, I want you to kind of just play with your dress just a little bit. And then um, when I say, okay, now I want you just to kind of like give me a little glance into the camera, right, as I approach you. Um, and so, um, you know, I, I pushed in for the shot and, and, and she gave me that, which I think is absolutely incredible. And, and you'll see there, I put um, just a little flare effect, which is this uh, layer right here. Um, it's a lens distortion 
um, from their legacy uh, 4K um, pack, just a little sort of like glass uh, distortion thing that sort of comes in and then just fades out subtly. I think I think those sorts of um, things are, are best executed just subtly, right? Not so many huge colorful flares and, and things to distract, but something that's that's subtle, elegant, and I think just like enhances the image um, are, are great things to go after. And you know how they say a picture is worth a thousand words? So that, you know, it, also on my list of hero shots is, is usually, uh, you know, a groom prep type shot. We all do those shots, get in front of the window. Nothing particularly special about that one. Um, the groom was a, a, a little harder um, to, to um, uh, I guess, pull some of that out of him. He's, you know, a little more shy, I guess. Um, so that one, I think, you know, was, was kind of more basic, but they had this cool painting uh behind them, the, the parents were, you know, really into art and, you know, art collecting and, and things like that. So um, thought it was okay. You know, not, not a crazy, uh, beautiful shot by any means, but um, gets the job done. A picture is worth a thousand words, so I thought. And just a little bit on the framing for dad here, right? So this shot, um, you know, in terms of framing up for speeches, what I like to do is, you know, shoot into the shadows. Um, for speeches um, and, and have the light kind of on the other side angled in, right? And I think what that does is just give them a little bit of, uh, gives them a little profile here, just kind of makes them pop just a little bit. If I had the light on the same side as the camera, he would just kind of be bright on the right side of his face and it, I don't think it would look quite as elegant, right? Um, so if you're looking for kind of a way to um, upgrade just the look and feel of your speech angles and your lighting, shoot into the shadows, light the opposite side. Um, and those reflections in the back, I, I framed the mic stand. That's my own personal mic stand and microphone that I brought, placed it specifically there because I like the way that um, the houses on the other side of, that's a lake there. And those are just the, the, the bokeh, you know, the, from the, the lights uh, and the houses across the other side of the lake. I thought it looked really awesome, so. Uh, well, how do I draw a picture that explains what is a great marriage? I just, how do I do that and draw a Okay, so again, epic moment, right? I've never seen fireworks at a wedding before. That's a first for me. In hindsight, I wish I had another angle that was a little wider that would have seen pff, the fireworks go off in the background. But again, lesson learned. Um... For speeches, like like this shot in particular, where I have the bride's reaction and she's shocked, I always have a dedicated camera on the bride and groom, as well as a dedicated camera on the speech giver. Just because I think it's important for certain moments in the speeches, especially if you're delivering longer form doc edits, to have you know the reaction of the couple when so-and-so says something really beautiful or, or personal and you know, the bride or the couple reacts with, with various emotions, right? So um, that's just something I do. I know a lot of people, you know, choose not to record the couple's reaction at all, or if they do, they get maybe just a couple of minutes just to have it there, right? Um, I think it's important for moments like this where I get the reaction and it's it's awesome. Big, like, you know, a massive canvas. So the fireworks shots, I'll just touch on this really quick. This, again, A7S III, I was crouched on the ground with my 35-1-4. Uh, I obviously had a heads up that the fireworks were coming from the bride's dad. So, uh, I tr <laughs> and I'll be honest, I tried to do too many things at once, right? I had my drone off on the left side of the house ready to take off. Uh, and, you know, because obviously if I had taken the drone off in the pitch dark during dinner, the bride would have been like, what the heck are you doing? Um, so I had that going. Uh, and then so as soon as the fireworks kicked off, I had my second shooter grab my Practolite, which is a really great light if you've not heard of it, run around to the front right of the couple and just hit them with a little bit of profile light, which just makes the image pop, gives them a little bit of hair light. And I think just provides like a really beautiful image and just gives a little bit of depth and uh, separation from the obviously the beautiful fireworks going on in the background and now this whole thing is in 4k i can shoot fireworks in 4k 60 frames with the a7s3 so 
Love this shot, huge fan of it. It's painting in the sky, but I don't paint really well. So the best I can do is I hope in 30 years after what you're about to see, you look back and say, yeah, it's been like that. So let me talk a little bit about music, right? Obviously music is very important. When I had first started working on this trailer, I had actually like, wasn't like a country, more of like a folky song. The bride is really into like country music. So I was trying to lean in that direction. It just didn't fit, right? Um, to me, this day, this, these moments were, were, you know, uh, exuded to me personally, like a high end sort of a feel, right? Uh, and that to me resonates with like strings and violins and things. So I hunted through music bed, found this track, and what you'll see here, the music track is audio three. Um, so if, if I had let the music sort of play out as it, you know, from start to finish, just in the, in the raw MP3 track, it, it didn't progress the way that I wanted. Um, so let me just show you, right? So let me drag this out and just let it play, right? What you're about to see, you look back and say, yeah, it's been like that. Okay, so you see like, that's just the natural progression of the song, right? Um, but what I do for most of my teasers, and I'll say for most of my quote unquote creative edits, um, I chop and screw the music up almost every time. And to me, I can, you know, uh, I've gotten more experience at taking a song that I'm really in love with and then counting measures like a metronome to clip it at a certain moment and then fade it into another section of the song. So that's what I did here on, on audio three. You'll see this little constant gain, this little crossfade, um, where I knew that at the conclusion of the dad's speech, this really profound statement, I wanted the song to like, just really hit. Right. Um, so that was the intention there. And I think, you know, the end result is something more emotive and makes you feel something as opposed to just throwing a song in the background and, and letting it play. So totally encourage you guys to always tweak and modify the songs you select for your wedding films to the moments that are most profound or most emotional uh, in your wedding films. It goes a long way. 30 years after what you're about to see, you look back and say, yeah, it's been like that. Again, more of the cameras, more, more of the, the fireworks stuff, it's just kind of getting in tighter, wider. You know, I think for, for every beautiful setting I have with the couple, what I try to do is get uh, wider and then tighter versions of the same shot. So that way you can kind of cut back and forth, provides a little more perspective. Um, and I think goes a long way in just sort of mixing things up rather than just staying static in one location. Um, or, you know, um, like a lot of videographers tend to do just stand shoulder to shoulder with the photographer and not get in on the action or encourage the couple to, to provide you more, you know, motion, for example. Um, I think that's another thing that separates a lot of videographers that do it well is their ability to work with the photographer and give and take, um, you know, uh, just say like, hey, can I step in close for uh for for this shot right where i knew i wanted to get the blown out stuff in the background and just get like the couple's close-up reaction in that moment right i was able to say hey can i get in tight with this real quick get in get five seconds back out so the photographer could get what she needed so that shot pretty cool it was on the uh Ronin SC A7S III on the 25 f2 lens. Uh, I had basically told the couple ahead of time, I said, as you pull out of the driveway, I want you to drive past me and I'm going to run and look like an idiot uh, on the side of your car to get this shot. And then, you know, about uh, 75 yards up the road, I want you to stop and then I'll hop in the back seat and um, we'll continue driving, right? Um, I think the shot's really cool. There was a little bit of wobble as I ran with the camera, but um, I, I added a little bit of a warp stabilizer on there, which um, even for me, I, I've become very attuned at pinpointing where a warp stabilizer is used. It's tough to spot it in this shot, but um, 
I did use it and it provided me with a little bit more play and eliminated some of the, um, you know, the jitter involved with running, uh, running after a car at, you know, 30 miles an hour down a street. So these shots, the car shots, I'll talk a little bit about this. So, uh, so again, I had told the couple, Hey, pull up the road, stop. I'm going to hop in the back. The photographer and I were both back there. And, uh, basically what I did was I just worked with her. I said, Hey, uh, you know, I want to get a shot over here on the left side. Uh, and she asked if she could switch spots with me. Um, and you know, uh, we just kind of got what we needed again. It goes back to getting multiple angles, um, mixing things up, try not to stay in one spot, uh, you know, and just move around, get different perspectives. And this shot in particular, where I had, you know, her hands raised up in the air, that was another moment similar to where in the beginning shot where she rests her head on the groom, I said, Hey, you know, throw your hands up in the, can you throw your hands up in the air really quick? Like you're on a roller coaster. Right. And I knew that like her hair blowing in the breeze could look really cool. And the groom just happened to look over her, look over to her at the same time. And I thought this shot was just really cool. Um, so it's things like this, sometimes like, you know, you, you, again, you need to speak up and coach your couple just a little bit. Uh, and sometimes you have moments like this where like the groom just happens to look over, smile, and then like keeps driving that like just sort of naturally happen, right? It's, it's awesome when it does. So yeah, drone stuff, you know, I don't get too crazy with, with drone shots anymore. You know, um, this is just on a, a Mavic 2 Pro. Um, I was kind of strafing the property left to right while also panning the the camera uh, on the drone up and i just sped it up a little bit uh, i think it kind of gave it more uh, more of like a dynamic feel as opposed to just like the slow drone movement speeding it up just a little bit kind of just gave it like a little made it a little more exciting i think i don't know maybe not couple architecture shots their home was incredible i wanted to sneak in a few shots of the property i wish i had gotten more because this property was absolutely incredible um let's talk about the table shots here in one second so that little push-in shot here um again i was on the ronin sc this was with the 25 uh zeiss f2 um I enjoy a good like push in shot. And I think if you're gonna, um, you know, make make a, a, an entryway into something, having some something in the foreground helps somebody kind of feel a sense of perspective as like they're walking into the location and kind of makes it feel more personal, like they're there in a way. Um, so that was intentional, the, the sort of the, the, the left side of the door frame uh, in the shot as I, as I push through, right? And that is just a subtle gimbal movement with, again, you'll notice the chair in the, in the front right. Um, to me, the, you know, the gimbal stuff can be overused and I'm guilty of it myself from time to time. But I think a, a way to make a gimbal shot more dynamic from time to time is, again, having something in the foreground, much like the door frame on that last shot. Having the chair, that white chair, which uh, is a little, little bit more of a contrast between some of the blues and the reds and the greens kind of just gives it a little more, a little more depth, makes it a little more unique, I think. And these two shots, nothing crazy about them, in my opinion. Um, I just really liked the reflection um, uh, of the trees off the lake. Obviously, it's fall time in New England, so it's really beautiful. Um, thought it was really nice to highlight that, so. And again, fireworks at the end, my little logo splash thing at the end. Um, yeah, I mean, the fireworks are epic. I just had to put more of it in, let's be honest, you know? So yeah, that's that's the walkthrough. Um, I hope that was helpful. To summarize on a couple key points, you know, I think for a really great wedding film teaser, what's helpful is lead with your best shot. You know, the shot, that hero shot that you're most proud of, just bam, lead with it because attention spans are so short in the world of Instagram, TikTok, social media in general. You want to lead with your best stuff, something that hooks the viewer straight out of the gate. So that was the intention with, with certainly that first shot. Um, 
build the music to the moment, build the music to the feeling, um, modify the music to the moments. You know, don't just take a song, slap it in the background, tweak it, tweak it to the moments, the most profound moments, the most emotional moments. And like, as it builds and builds and builds, have like a really something awesome happen right as the crescendo hits because oof, the viewer just gets the goosebumps, they get the emotion, they get the feeling and it resonates, right? They remember your work. And I've gotten those comments before. They say something just stands out about the way you do things. And I think it's subtle things like that, you know, the little light reflection, the lens distortion things, the, the violin hits when the bride's got the slow motion, she looks into the camera. Things like that go a long way in differentiating your work from some of the other offerings out there. So yeah, that's really it. I hope that was beneficial. Um, you know, again, teasers can be game changers for your business. They can really get a lot of eyes on your content. They can be a really, really great source of early engagement from guests and other people who know the bride with all that early sharing going on. It can just create a lot of buzz, a lot of SEO traffic things like that. So I would highly recommend it. And hopefully some of the stuff that I went through today gives you a couple nuggets to, uh, to think about as you, uh, you know, uh, start offering teaser films and, and think about how to edit and to structure things. So if you liked it, if this helped you guys hit the subscribe button down below, hit the little bell for notifications as I come out with new material, new videos in the future. And until then, peace out and we'll see you next time.